Welcome back. In the previous lessons, we've introduced what heat transfer is and what are the heat transfer modes. We've also compared the heat transfer equation with the structural equation of motion. Just like how we solve structural problems, simulation is crucial in heat transfer problems too. Not only because most engineering problems do not have an analytical solution, but also because of the insights a simulation can provide us and the cost it can save from experiments. Now, the necessity of a simulation comes into picture when the problem is not solvable by hand. For a simple case like finding out the heat loss through a window, a 1D conduction equation will be sufficient. But if we want to find out the heat distribution at the surface of this radiator heater, simulation becomes necessary. Another advantage of simulation is the time and cost it saves from experiment, especially for some large-scale devices. Purchasing or building up the equipment, setting up a test, and conducting hundreds of iterations is not feasible in many engineering cases. But with simulation, for example, we can run an optimization of this heat exchanger design and quickly find out the optimal thin spacing and thickness in just a couple of hours. Compared to doing experiments, the cost of simulation is minimal. A simulation also knocks open the door of possibilities and gives us more insights into a heat transfer problem. With the heat transfer knowledge, we can do a hand calculation and easily estimate the feels like temperature on a windy day. But with the power of simulation, we can take one step further to understand and even design a new warm clothes material. Or for this oven simulation, it not only provides the temperature inside and outside the oven, but also tells us the time it takes to reach that temperature and even the temperature distribution inside the food. Simulation pushes development and improvement in related industries for heat transfer. It can answer simple questions such as what's the path of heat flow to more complex ones such as understanding the influence of changing the design. Now, with modern computer powers, the potentials of simulation are never seen before. Multi-physics simulation can be well handled to achieve realistic analysis in another level. A common multi-physics case is to couple electromagnetic field and the thermal field. For example, when designing a circuit board, people use simulation to evaluate the distribution of heat caused by the electronic components and how it, in turn, affects the performance of the circuit board. Simulation is a powerful tool, but before we jump into the world of simulation, we must remember that an engineer is the one to make sure that this tool is used properly and under engineering judgment. First, we need to make sure the assumptions are reasonable. For example, in this conduction analysis of a composite wall, we need to consider the contact resistance between different layers, as simply assuming they are perfectly bounded might lead to inaccurate results. And secondly, an engineer needs to use results to validate the model is set up correctly. If a soldering iron takes only 0.5 seconds to reach the temperature of 300 degrees, which is not realistic, then something is probably wrong with the model setup. Finally, after making sure the assumptions are valid and the model is set up correctly, an engineer can leverage the simulation result to drive design decisions. For example, which fin shape to choose for this heat exchanger. To summarize, a simulation is important because it's necessary in many engineering cases, it can save cost from experiments, it provides insight into a problem, and is powerful with multi-physics capability. Although simulation is so powerful, it's just a tool and it's the engineer who needs to make judgment of the simulation result and drive correct engineering decisions.